Ah, it's a beautiful Tuesday here in Southern California on 98.1 award-winning, that's right, award-winning KHDS 1220 AM and 98.1. I'm excited about today's show because we're going to be talking uh, two very important subjects, your health, your wellness, but we're going to save that for the second half. My wonderful co-host is today. She'll be with me every time she's in Southern California. She travels around the country making people better. I can't tell you where she lives. It's it's a security <laughs> issue. Karen Weaney. Yes. You've got to talk uh, in the microphone. Uh, oh, she put it in my mouth. Again. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Karen. You can see us on uh, YouTube. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. Uh, producing the show, one of my favorite people in the whole world, Cody Como. And don't forget the second half. We're going to talk about wellness, and you'll hear Cody talk about the Millennial Minute. Let me get right into the show. I don't want to waste any time. He's a dear friend. I've known him for a long time. I respect him. I listen to his own radio show. He's on many, many, many radio stations all over the country. Joe Messina. Wow, you actually admitted to knowing and liking me? I do like and you. And you are a man of strong, strong character. <laughs> well, you and I are both conservatives. Karen's a conservative, so I'm not sure. We're going to try to give both sides uh whatever both sides mean today. We're going to try to give both sides uh, equal time. But let's get right into it. You're a school board member, Hart School District. What is going on in Santa Clarita with the Hart School District? Well, you know, it's, first of all, it's the, it's the William S. Hart uh, High William School District. William S. Hart, right? sorry. We're, we're, responsible, well, we're responsible for all the junior highs and high schools in the Santa Clarita Valley. Uh, it's about 21,000 students total. Wow. And yeah, it's a, it's it's a fairly would be considered a pretty big district. We're we're a successful district, you know. Overall, um, we have many award-winning schools. We have great teachers, great staff. I mean, I'm not just saying that because I'm a trustee, but we do. We we have teachers that really, you know, successful su- successful districts aren't successful because the trustees are so great. It's successful because staff and teachers and parents get involved in the education of their kids, and so I think that's why we do so well. Well, I personally think you're a terrific leader. Uh, You bring, even though you're conservative, your radio show is conservative, you bring an honest, open attitude to the school board. You don't get yourself in trouble, so that says a lot. Uh, i got to try harder. Karen, where do we want to start with the school board member? What, what As a mommy, now you have a kid in high school, a local high school, right? I do. What is your concern as a mother? Well, um... There's a lot of things going on. I need help with my microphone now. Well, um, I've had two children that have gone through William S. Hart um, and all the school, local schools. So I think it's, it's or, you know, through Stevenson Ranch and, and um, um, I, I think this. I, I think what you touched on was the biggest part is parents. Oh, yeah. Parenting, being involved in your children's life. And my backdrop is law enforcement. So my children have been erased and have been around guns. They've been around reality. And so I'm, I'm a realist, realist when it comes to education and showing my kids and telling my kids this is what's going on. And this, is, this isn't just in the current stages. This is, you know, my oldest is 28. So I've always been very open as a parent explaining what could happen scenarios now look at fast forward look what we're having to deal with Mm -hmm. right so there's a lot more stuff happening so i think being connected with your child talking about a plan a a plan b because there might not be the best scenario that the school tells your child to do right and that's kind of where i take a little bit of a different stance i want my child to be safe i want them to make the decision so teaching your kids to make smart decisions empowering your children um, those are those are things that kind of. How just about teaching them to open their mouth? Look, in in a bunch of school shootings that we've had, and and if it ever sounds like I'm being flippant, I don't mean to be at all. I'm just not very good with the English language. But here, here's the deal: we've had kids every single time on my radio show when, when somebody has been shot, when we've had a shoot at, shooting at a school, I always say I'm not saying anything tonight. I want to wait a day or two, mm-hmm. because everybody starts to speculate. But what do we find out? Ninety-eight point nine percent of the time. That child had issues. That child had anger issues. We knew that that kid in this last one, yep, the minute we heard the school was being shot up, we knew it was so-and-so. What, why, why do we not teach our children to say things? Why do, not, do we not teach our children to be on top of these? At the Heart District, we have a couple of things going on. And I know some of them sound touchy-feely, but they work. We have that, that hotline. We have that line where somebody can call and say, I'm worried about... Sam so-and-so, okay? So-and-so's, uh, uh, we know he has guns. He's threatened to do this. 
we have those kind of lines where the kids can open up and talk. Every one of the school districts has a group of, of kids, of young students, mm -hmm. from all the grades that, that are together that, that somebody can come to and say, you see so-and-so over in the corner? We think he's a problem, and this is why. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're pushing for communication, but we still have children that will say, I'm not telling on so-and-so. I'm not doing this with that. I'm not squealing on so-and-so. And I think, to your point, we have to talk to our kids. We have to teach them, look... When a kid's chewing gum in class, yeah, that's squealing. Keep your mouth shut and leave them alone. But when you have somebody that's threatening to hurt someone, that's not squealing. That's saving 17 lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Show is called The Business Live 20 Years Doing It. I'm the host, Coach Ron Tunick, with my co-hosts today, the fabulous, the smart, the innovative, the witty Karen Waney. So when you say hotline, is this a hotline for the parents, hotline for the, for the students? The, it's so the kids, for the, students. the kids know a number to call. They have, they have their own. Yeah, it's not just a number. It's you know, there's people they can contact on site, and not, not, not grown ups necessarily because they may not feel comfortable going to a counselor, but they will go to a, a group of their peers, and their peers will jump on it and take care of it as well. But is know, the hotline used? Oh yeah, regularly. Okay. Let's get into specifics. Our wonderful guest today for Karen and I on the business of life is Joe Messina. He's a William S. Hart school board member. Trustee. Okay, trustee. Yeah. So let me get right into some specifics. Uh, you, the job, we're all three adults. Our job is to protect our children. That's our number one job in society, period. So when we release them to go to school every day, that becomes your job. You're a trustee. You, your job is to make sure that our kids are safe and provide that leadership. So let me throw out some ideas. The classroom in the high schools in Santa Clarita, where's the security? Do you have cameras in the classroom now? Uh, we don't have cameras in the classroom, but they are on campus. And, and they're so effective. Is there enough, Let me Joe? tell you what. They're, we, they're so effective that we actually have a picture. I saw a little clip of a young man walking up to the camera with a hoodie on and cut it off with a hacksaw and took it home with him. So that was, you know, cameras are only as good as... Uh, as so good. are you satisfied <laughs> that there's enough cameras uh on on the school I, I yes i'm uh, it's not the camera part here's here's what it is you can have cameras everywhere somebody's got to be sitting there watching those screens somebody's yeah. got to decide is that a threat or isn't a threat is that a bunch of kids just goofing around you, you know what i'm saying you've really got to pay attention to what's happening the the, the the other side to that is teaching the teachers and the parents and the kids to keep an eye open to watch out what's going on on campus what's different who's here that doesn't belong you know, our campuses are all gated. I, I, know this is, I know some parents are going to get mad at me. We cannot, or I'm going to speak for this trustee, I can't keep your kids safe 100% of the time. It's, it's a physical impossibility. Somebody with, a, with an old-fashioned pickup truck can get through one of our fences. They're not all chain links. Some of them are wrought iron. You've got classrooms that look at the street. You know, if somebody wants to go by and start you know, doing some damage that way, they can do it. Part of this is keeping your kids on alert, keeping the teachers on alert, keeping the campus on alert. We have resource officers on our campuses, and I believe that our resource officers will engage if something goes wrong. I will tell parents that it's coming back around again. Last year, the L.A. County Board of Supervisors wanted to pull all the resource officers off of high school campuses, and we fought to keep them on. It's coming back up again. And I'm one of those trustees that would say, I want them on board. I Absolutely. want an arm sheriff Absolutely. on campus mm -hmm. to help. And some campuses should, re uh, should have two. I agree. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We when, you, when, when you look at things that are discussed in the news, such as funding for mental health, is there, be honest, is there enough resources on the schools right now for mental health issues? You know, some school district. I can't speak for all. I can speak for ours. I'd like to see a little more, but I'll tell you what. Um, Mr. Brown balanced the budget on the backs of school districts. We were told that we had to keep, providing mental health services for young people, yet the state wasn't going to pay us for it anymore. So we had two choices. You either cut it way back and you just deal mm -hmm. with the, the sickest of the sick, or you do what our team did at the district. We have a great team at our district where they went and looked for federal money. They went and looked for state. They looked for grants. They looked for ways to get money in to keep providing those services. And then we actually hired in counselors. So we have a network throughout all the schools that when we have somebody with an issue, a problem, we see something brewing at a school, we do have people that can go and help out. We do have the ability to provide basic 
mental health services, and then you can move them on or you can refer them to child and families. I mean, we, this is a great community to live in. This is a great community for support of our children, our seniors, and others. Yeah. If I can add a couple things, because we're, we're obviously talking about the high school level right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's very different than an elementary school and sure. teaching that elementary student to to know how to do this and do that. But what kind of pops into my head, and this is the argument that I have, you know, going back and forth. Again, it, it does go back to the parent mm-hmm. for a lot, of, a lot of reasons. But what I wanted to talk about more was, is, you know, we're now asking our children to be more aware, which they need to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but how about that parent that maybe has a child that they're seeing things that aren't right? So we need those parents to speak up too. Right, yeah, not right. And not just put it all on the kids having to say something. Hey, this child's not doing it. I agree. The parents having struggles or having a hard time with their, their child. They're seeing some violence. They need to come forward um, and 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 start addressing issues. Um, we as parents need to. Help. We we're, we're basically training our kids to be better adults. Right. We want them to be better than us when they grow up. Yeah. So we need to empower them. We need to help them in learning things, but we also we need to let them know it's okay for them. They need to make decisions on their own. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest, we can't baby our children. We can't make the, those decisions for them when we're not with them. So I think providing them with education and doing this different scenarios and saying, hey, what would you do? And allowing them to make that decision. Of course, we have a lot of choices that we want to lead them to. We give them a good bag to pick from. But again, it goes back to Getting them used to being adults, mm-hmm. as not as quickly as possible, but learning. It's responsible young people, responsible, really. Responsible, and yeah. There's, and a, there's a difference between, again, back to, there's a difference between telling on your friends and keeping the rest of them safe. More so than not. I mean, you, you've been in law enforcement. You know what happens. More so than not. Somebody dropped the ball and not watching someone or didn't want to say anything about mm-hmm. somebody because they don't want to be labeled in a certain way. And, and, and you have to. You have to open your mouth when you see somebody in that deep, dark place and it's had issues over a period of time. Well, you're bringing up a good point. You're listening to award-winning KHTS 1220-98.1 on the FM. Karen Waney and the coach, Coach Ron Tunick, and our very special guest, uh, Joe Messina. Hopefully he'll come back many times and tell us what's going on with the William S. Hart School District. He is a trustee. So Karen brings up a good point, Joe. You know, 60% sad number in California are divorces. So kids act out. I mean, there's so many things that are going on, as Karen says, in the home that, you know, that kind of bleed over uh, to the right. You you must experience this. Right. So back to my question about mental health. You're saying... In the William S. Hart School District, it's adequate. Uh, if uh, I say we provide it. Okay. Now, saying it's adequate, you know, I'm not a professional, right? And I see the cases that come by, and I see the caseload our people have. And, and you know, it's about money, too. We don't have the we have to provide ah, education. Ah, now you're going to get me riled up. So well, it's about the money. You've got to cut the check. Okay. This, so what? Go, going back to what Karen said, first of all, is there parent participation? Do you feel like when you have a school board tomorrow night, is that no. school board going to be full of parents? I, my argument is always if I have something important on the, uh, on the agenda, if I want to get parents there to listen, I have to say I'm pulling the football program. And then I'll fill that room up with parents that are mad. Uh, you go to the PTA, the PAC meetings at these high schools. And, and again, look at parents, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying that you're not. Uh, some of you have to work two and three jobs. I get it, but you've got to get engaged. At some point in time, you have to engage in your child's education. Many people come up to us and complain on an issue that we've been looking at for five months, and the night we take the vote, they show up. We've already had three public hearings. Nothing. We don't see them. So the issue for me is this. To your point about the board meeting, great. But you know what? Every high school, every junior high school is its own community. They have parent advisory councils that meet once a month, PTAs that meet once Where are you? Are you there? Are, no, are, you're, you're, are you engaged? You're, you're nailing it. This is such a sensitive issue for me that, you know, we need an outcry. I mean, if anybody's listening, you're a grandparent, a parent, you, you need to be down there tomorrow night. You need to be out in the streets. I mean, when you say we don't have enough money, that just irritates the you-know-what out of me because it's our responsibility as a community, as Karen said, to protect our kids. So if we have a money issue – I. I would vote in a heartbeat for a one cent tax. If it takes that to protect our kids, let's do it. 
Yes Co- or no on that, Coach? We have where our our um, our budget, our high school budget is almost two hundred million dollars, uh, but eighty eighty some odd percent of that goes to uh, salaries and benefits. The re- I think it's close to eighty five percent. So fifteen percent is what we have to play with, if you would. You know, but and and but we in need that, to inform the public, Joe. Then, we, to me, that number doesn't make sense. If if we're concerned about the safety of our kids, and you just said it, we you, you use the word adequate. If we need more health professionals, if we need to figure out how to communicate communicate better to get parent involvement, it takes money. Unfortunately, it takes money, it takes resources, and and again, to your point though, it takes parent involvement. Look. Uh, you talked about bullying out in the hall. You and I were talking about bullying, too. And I know this is another one of those things that I make people crazy with. Does us no good to, 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 it does us no good to discipline a child for bullying? Absolutely none. You know why? Because the kids don't l- you learn bullying in the playground there. They don't learn bullying on school campus. You know where they learn it? At home. So as we're teaching them not to be bullies, as we're teaching them how not to, what happens? They go home and they get bullied. So, what message are you send to the kid? My dad says this is okay, but the school's telling me it's not. I, I don't know how you, so again, I'm not the expert here. I don't know how you deal with that, but parents have to engage. When we're dealing with their children in certain areas that they're having deficiencies, I need parents involved. We need parents involved. And where does that, how do we get that message out? Oh, it's, it's been since I've been on the, before I was on the board, it's been an issue to try to get parents engaged and involved. I mean, pe- look at We've just come out of a pretty bad economic time. People, some people are working two jobs. Some people, you know, as you alluded to, you have single parents out there working hard just to keep food on their table. So I don't want to browbeat the parents. But you ha- uh, one of the things I say on my show all the time, that child didn't choose you. You had that child. It's up to you to bring up that child to the best of your ability. If you need help in the community, you have friends and I'm sure there's resources. Again, you're putting it on the school to provide a service for that child that might be struggling, right? But mm-hmm. really, there's resources, I believe, in our Santa Cruz Valley uh, where the parent would take the child to that resource. Mm-hmm. And that way it takes the, that money or the budget sure. you know, out of the school. Right. Where when I, when I say tax or when I say more money spent for safety, I want that – for the safety of the school, you know, an extra deputy on site, you know, better training. What are they going to do if something were to happen? There's still no clear path of what these, these students should do. And that, for me as a parent, that's, that's the part that's sad. Well, we uh, do. Uh, we, do uh, we, have, <laughs> we have active shooter drills. We train our, 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 our teachers. I know these are, these are little things, but they are still things. You put right. people in certain situations. There's been conversation as to... Should the kids be in the class when we do this? Should they not be in the class? Well, I, I'm not the expert. We have, we actually um, contract and we have uh, um, FBI consultants. We have sheriff's department consultants. Yeah. They go in, they look at what we have going on and what we can do and can't do. But again, I, I don't want to sit here trying to say, hey, we're the safest place in the world. There is no know. school you campus that is the safest place uh, there is. His name is Joe Messina. William S. Hart, high school trustee. He's somebody that really, really cares about our kids. You've been on the board now how many years? Uh, this will be my ninth year, and, and I'm up for re-election this year. You have, and you, I am running again. You are? So just, just are, are you going to get re-elected? <laughs> are you going to get re-elected? Look, I hope so. Here's the thing. People like to take my, my, my personal views on certain things, but on the board, you know, 85% of what we do is we uphold state law. It's really that simple. The other 15%... You know, career tech ed, you and I have been talking about this since I've known you. Yep, yep. That's my big deal. When I got on the board, I was watching it going away, and I'm saying, don't, don't do that. You're the common sense guy on the board. I'll give much. you that. You are really the common sense, you and know. it's interesting that the local newspaper does not beat you up. So that's, <laughs> that says a lot for what you're doing. We only have a couple more minutes. We're going to take a break. Karen and I are going to come back after the break. We're going to do the Millennium Minute. Then we're going to talk about wellness because that is Karen's expertise. Your wellness, my wellness. Karen's going to help me get off sugar. I have no idea how she's going to do that. Yeah, that's what are you going to duct tape them to a chair in a closet I, I, somewhere? I'm curious how she's going to do this, Joe. Uh, you need to listen to the show. You can stay around, but you need to listen to You need to get off sugar, too. So on your show, on your show, on your national syndicated radio show, what do you hear from parents? You, you, this has to be a subject that people talk about on your show. Well, remember that the majority of my audience is is cons- right wing conservative people, and their irritant is that they feel like the schools have failed them from a, from a basic standpoint. Of, you know, we were talking about this in the hall. 
Reading, writing, and arithmetic is what our kid, our schools should be teaching. They should be teaching the basics of education. When you start teaching, uh, you know, moral values, social values, and all this other stuff, and, and in some cases they go 180 degrees. Uh, what, what's being taught at the how at the home uh, level? So now you're putting a kid in a position, a student in a position where do I believe my teacher or do I believe my family? Who's right? Who's right? you want to talk about confusion? That's big time confusion, and you're adding to the problem at that point in time. So um, it's complicated. Most how did of what the I hear three of us, three of us, uh, somehow survived? How did we survive? We're going to come right back <laughs> on the show called The Business Life. That's Joe Messina, and he is a. William S. Hart, school board trustee. Karen Winnie and the coach on award winning 98.1. We'll be right back. You got some aches and pains, you weekend warrior. Chronic inflammation or chronic pain? Well, guess what? I've got a solution for you. It's called Men Cryotherapy right here in Santa Clarita. Men Cryotherapy is what the major leaguers are using to mend their aches and pains. They're in the LA Fitness Shopping Center on Newhall Ranch Road. They could be a wonderful blessing for you to relieve you of your joint pain and regain your mobility. Remember the name, Men Cryotherapy, or check them out at Men Cryotherapy. Dot com. That's M-E-N-D, cryotherapy.com. Little Eye Leaders is the newest preschool in the Santa Clarita Valley. At Little Eye Leaders, our outstanding teachers lead with intellect, perspective, and heart. That means our programs provide a warm, nurturing atmosphere to meet the unique needs of each child. We believe that play is a powerful form of learning for young children. That's why our kids have every opportunity to learn through the magic and excitement of play. Parents, schedule a tour today by calling 303-0400 or online at littleeyeleaders.org. At City of Hope, we don't believe the future can wait for the future. For over a century, we've been advancing science that saves lives. From four of the world's top cancer-fighting drugs to the development of synthetic human insulin. We are maximizing the potential of immunotherapy and making precision medicine a reality. It's not enough to promise future cures for cancer. We must find them sooner. We are the miracle of science with soul. Find out more at cityofhope.org. We all know someone impacted by the Las Vegas tragedy. It's touched our valley in thousands of households. Many of us were actually there. In Santa Clarita, we had one fatality and 14 injured by bullets. Many more were injured trying to escape. Others are still traumatized by their ordeal, finding challenges returning to normal lives. The law firm of Owen Patterson Owen is helping many Las Vegas victims get financial assistance for their ordeal. If you know someone impacted by the shooting, visit opolaw.com. Santa Clarita's hometown station. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220, your hometown station. All right, got to plug our show Thursday with uh, Charlene Gill talking about real estate interest rates. It's a very interesting show, and then Friday's my sports show. I'm just noting, uh, Joe, I don't know if you care about sports or care and care, care less. But, man, the the breaking news with the NFL with all these players, big-time players changing teams. All right, Millennial Minute, Cody Como. Uh, what's on your mind? What's bugging you as a 25-year-old? Tell us. I don't know if it's bugging me too much, but just one thing that's come up a lot lately, a lot more, is um, I know someone you love, Netflix. Yes, has a junkie. Becoming more and more of kind of like a dumping ground for projects that just didn't take off. I don't know if you saw the big uh, Cloverfield thing they did in the Super Bowl. That was actually just an old film they decided to repurpose as a Netflix release because it got uh, poor screening reviews. And I believe a similar thing happened with the new Natalie Portman film. It just came out. It's in theaters here, doing poorly. Overseas, it went straight to Netflix. Didn't even get a theatrical release. Well, do you know Seinfeld? Are you too young to remember oh, Seinfeld? Seinfeld, Seinfeld yeah. was going to get canceled. The first couple of years, it, 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 there was many shows, right, Karen, that just hung on, hung on, and then became incredibly popular. So yes. I'm okay. I mean, sometimes it – look, Netflix is awesome because it has a 100 different genres. I mean, you know, if you want comedy, I like the whodunit dramas. Do you watch Netflix? A little bit. What? A little bit. That's not much. Yeah. No, that's not much. I'm too busy to watch movies. Well, you're, you're <laughs> raising kids. you got a hubby. you got a new house going on. Uh, you're famous. Uh, oh, yeah. Karen Waney is my co-hostess. Joe's going to stay with us. We're going to try to figure out this wellness thing. What, so what, is, what do you do? What does Karen Waney do? Oh, wow. I love what I get to do. Okay. Tell us. And, tell um, us. Now being retired from law enforcement for 
for quite some time, actually. Um, I got back to helping people um, in 2008. I opened my own personal training business. Wow. And that was really my passion. Uh, I started running when I was six years old on our SCVAA track club that's now gigantic. What was your, uh, what did you do, the 220, the 440? I, d I was a sprinter initially as I, I was young. And as I got older, I started doing mid, so 440s and then relays. I and was 440. You were? Yeah. What was your fastest time? Uh, let's keep moving on. <laughs> let's keep going. I took, my, I took third place. Six and a half minutes, I can tell you. I took was. third place once in a race. Uh, pro I still have the clipping. Anyway, keep going. Karen Waney and the coach on the Business Life, 20 years doing the show. My wonderful co host is talking about wellness. So, uh, you were a trainer. So I, so I opened my own personal training Ooh, uh, business in 2008. Not doing that anymore? Well, I do. My, my corporation is Love Your Life Wellness, Inc. I know. So I I'm that. able to do um, The Love training. Your Life and the Business of Life should. Oh, should absolutely. We should do something that with that. That got me excited today when you sent me that. that 20 uh, years doing the show. I had no idea. All right. So Where have we been all our lives? What, let's get right into it. <laughs> Sugar is the villain. Yes? No? It is a pretty big villain. Yeah, it's as addictive as, as heroin and cocaine and those kinds of things. So people don't realize it because it, obviously they're two different things, right? But your body craves it. And once you have that addiction going, it's really hard to fend off. And so um, part of what I help people do through education and showing them different ways is a plan. We talked about this. We talked about this with your book. You know, if you don't have a plan of how you're going to execute to get to your goal, you're going to live in la-la land for, for a while. Karen, I'm educated. I know it's a villain. Joe just lost 20. Are, are you I back on like sugar? 30 pounds. Total. You, well, I'm not back on sugar, sugar. It's just, you know, I was that guy that couldn't go buy a candy jar without throwing right. something in his mouth, plus other stuff to eating. But you know, uh, my show ends at nine o'clock. I used to have a pound of pasta at night, uh, you know, that kind which of Which is thing. a sugar. But, just so yes, you know, it, okay. is. It's it breaks sugar. down into so sugar. Yeah. So, so part of, once you understand what sugar does to your body, I think, um, and I have uh, resources to show and educate people on that, I think it's really important because it's breaking down into the cellular level and your body's releasing insulin. So this, the sugar or the glucose is getting into the cells and then it gets, the cells get overloaded and then that's where fat storages come. And so once you start learning that, you start now creating a plan or a different way of eating. So your body can respond differently because what we have now is diabetes is an epidemic, but metabolic syndrome, which is the precursor to all this is something that, um, is you don't have to be, you can be in your twenties and experience it. And that leads you into this path in life where it's not setting you up for success. So love your life. Wellness is about loving your life, making your life the best it could be. And the resources for that is through proper, uh, education, so, so you have proper eating, exercise, that balance, work-life balance is another biggie that I teach, and uh, business. And so it's like really the best of all worlds. I love what I get to do. Okay, so l let me dry out a little bit. So I understand everything you said, but then when the meal comes... I seem to make the bad choices. Well, when the meal comes, what do you mean? When it's delivered to you or when you're making the choice when to decide? When I'm making decide? the choice. Okay. You know, so I eat out a lot like, like all of us do. So uh, I, something takes over. Some, some mysterious thing takes over, Karen. Come on. You're a business coach, yes, right? I, yes, okay. I am. Yes. And so Lack of self-control. <laughs> he well, has it's hand plan and mouth it's disease. Planning. It's planning you know? because why are you going to sit down to eat? Obviously, um, you have... Because it's fun. I mean, some of us... Some of it's social. Okay. I went out to dinner right, last night with some good he friends. He and I go to business meetings all the time. It's so hard to choose in a restaurant, is it not? Thank you. It can be, but no, the thing is, school us. It, it, it can be, but if you've set yourself up for success prior to that time, then you're okay. Like so that bring means, our own food? Well, eating <laughs> proper meals leading up to that, that time, you know, eating every two to three hours is super important, you guys, because if you wait after that three hour period and then you do eat, one, you're hungrier, so you're going to eat a lot, and then two, then you're going to get that sugar spike, which is going to make you crave sugar later. You know, it's just, just that you're going to get that catch-22. So... Yes, preparing your meals is important. It is. 
you could still go out to eat. Like last night I went to BJ's. I got um, Brussels sprouts without the sauce on it. They were super yummy. Oh, my gosh. Um, I got a chicken breast, and I got one of their salads that they make. And I made my own little meal. And once you learn to to pick your protein. Did you have an alcoholic beverage? I did not. I didn't. See, that's the other thing. That's a whole other – that's probably a whole radio show in itself. So the, now it's not just sugar. It's it's about alcohol. <laughs> the business of life with Karen Waney, the coach, and Joe Messina and I were trying to figure – we're a few pounds overweight, so we're trying to figure out how to make better choices. So eating every two hours. So start me hours. off. What, what do I have for breakfast? And then two hours later, give, give, give us a – menu of the day what do you Sim- want me to simplicity do simplicity and listening to your body so waking up are you drinking coffee decaf okay so well organic coffee you. is great okay that's my that, that's what i would have a little bit of uh organic heavy cream okay that's it don't put a lot of sugar don't use a lot of those flavored creamers that are i'm gonna not going to argue hydrated. with you today because i want you to come back but uh, I, the organic thing just bugs the crap out of me i i i, I think it's all hype but Okay, that's we'll talk about that. Okay, for sure. so I'm having okay. I have decaf. So I had you a, have heavy cream. I had a bagel this okay. morning for breakfast. Horrible. The reasons why? It's a high Shut in carbohydrates. <laughs> Horrible. Horrible. I want you to hard boil some eggs. Have protein. Protein in the morning. Your body's going to respond so much better if you give your body a bunch of carbs okay, in the notes. morning. I'm taking notes. Um, I'm writing it down for you. Here okay, we go. Protein. No. Heavy. Or okay, high so I'm not gonna read them. You know. I can, <laughs> I can boil, I can boil hard-boiled eggs. Okay, so I'm gonna have my cup of cup of decaf. Enjoy your coffee. Drink your coffee. Um, have some hard-boiled eggs. It's a great choice. Um, yogurt. Uh, again, I love a yogurt. good Greek yogurt. Again, I'm gonna say organic, and you can we can talk about it later. Liquid chalk. That's what yogurt is for me. Joe. Yeah. Sorry. That's Joe Messina, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. You can hear him tonight from uh, nine, 9 to midnight on KHT. <laughs> Joe, 9 to, mi- pay attention. Nine to midnight. Yes, 9 to midnight. On KHT. It might go longer. His yeah. shows are really – have you ever listened to a show? Um, I think so. He, I've heard it, I've he will a rile you right. up, I, I guarantee you. I, I definitely you. will get your blood pumping. He, he will rile you what up. What about oatmeal? I mean, sometimes I have a, oatmeal as a snack with some blueberries in there. Oatmeal is good. So it's about portion with oatmeal, and it's about adding protein. And with the portion. Can when it. you add protein to a carbohydrate, it's going to break that down. And a little bit of good fat. So what I do is I do a um, pre-measured a quarter cup of oatmeal, oh. dry. So it's going to give about a half a cup see, of oatmeal. See, Coach made the same face I made. Okay, how about Okay, that? no, but listen, yeah, hear me ahead. out. As it's cooking, you can actually pour egg whites in it to have some protein in it. You don't even know they're in there. It makes like a porridge, so it's more filling. Okay, put a little bit of coconut oil in there. Okay, that I can Awesome do. sauce. You can add a couple slices of uh, banana, some chopped apple. Cinnamon is great for blood sugar. Now you got yourself a complete meal. You got a good fat. You got your protein. Coconut oil. You need coconut oil. Okay, I've heard about coconut Seriously, for a moment. I started I'm, using it, and ser- yeah, it's w- different. Can you taste it? No, I, can't, I really can't. I mean, no, unless you're going to put you know, two and a half cups in there. But So no, what does coconut oil do versus, I don't even know if I use oil. To Greases honest. the brain up, doesn't it? I it's mean, great for the brain. It's a multi-chain triglyceride or a good, you know, I'm not going to use big words on the show, but just to keep it simple for folks, it's a it's a good fat. Okay. And most folks and do not. And where am I going to put the coconut oil? You can put it in your oatmeal. You put a little in your coffee, believe it or not. How about wow. that? Wow. Okay. Wow. So we want to work on, there's a couple things that we want to really work on. Our, oily coffee. It's not oily. It tastes you won't, great. You won't, yeah. Work on your gut health, which we talked a little bit about on this show. You keep last your show. eye contact right here, okay? Gonna, Stay yeah, from the I got gut you. health. <laughs> gut health, your brain health, yeah. right? Yeah. And your blood sugar. Those are three things that I really focus yeah. on for so, and, you're not, and you're not, let's just be clear, because I know all, all people in the world now, they're going, they're going down to the supermarket now and buying a box of packets of oatmeal. You're not talking about that. We're talking about real oatmeal that you got to boil for a couple of minutes, right? Absolutely. Steel, yeah. baby, steel. Rolled, rolled oats, There's your breakfast. No bagel tomorrow morning. Okay. Go for the oatmeal. Time out oatmeal. a second. With so protein. McDonald's has the best I, oatmeal. Have you ever ordered the really? oatmeal? Really? Seriously? Seriously. I'm, try it. Go to McDonald's. Will straighten him out, please? I want, or you, Jersey I want Mike's, you to eat at home. My favorite sandwich. Eat at home. My it's dear, so much, like it's Joe, so much I'm better. on the road. I'm, I'm, get up, get up earlier. Hour. Prepare. You, one thing about oatmeal, you can make a bunch of it. You can actually not even have to cook it. You could put oatmeal with some almond milk in it. And it'll store, and too. And just put it in the refrigerator, yeah. and it basically will you know, absorb the, the, the fluid. <laughs> and, and Okay, it's that's yummy. breakfast. All right, let's go two hours after breakfast. Now what do you want okay. me to do? I, I would like um, – well, for us, we're going to talk about a GC control um, beverage that I think is awesome for you. 
for blood sugar. But for, for or you're on the road, you can have like a half an apple with some almond butter. And again, it depends on what your hunger is. You really should feed Hershey your bar. hunger. Hershey bar. No, no. Yeah, if that's what you're having. I drink a lot of water. Water's awesome. Um, but okay, apple. I like apples, so I can so, have an so you apple. you can have for... an apple with some almonds or some almond butter, uh, maybe a string cheese. Um, like that's like a little cheese. snack. Now it's going to be a couple hours later. You're ready for lunch. lunch. Um, a pro- protein, seek out protein. So it could be a fish, it could be chicken, it could be a salad. These are all things that if you go to uh, Salt Salt Creek Grill has amazing food over there. Go to good, go to good My quality restaurants. My sponsor is Jersey Mike's. Can you go to Jersey Mike's? Uh, 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 Jersey Mike's is is great for kids that are. They have a good food. They have good meats because they they're nitrate shop, free, right? And they can chop it up and and not eat the bread. You, the, yeah, you but can... I want you to have more. You and I go. We used to go to the pit, the yeah. pita pit, right? Yeah. They yeah. get nothing but fresh vegetables in that pita. Uh-oh. And they went out. Of, look. Are they now, still wait there? Wait a minute. Are they still there? She has that look on her face. It's not a good thing. Is the pita pit Too many still vegetables? there? Yeah, it's still there. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Is your goal ultimately to be healthier, or is your goal ultimately just to feed your body as it gets hungry? My goal is just... to live to be a hundred. Okay. And and <laughs> enjoy my life. Uh, and get my eating right. Okay, yes. Okay. Yeah. I want to get so it's going to take work. It's going to take change. Change is good, though, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just habits. It's but just men, habits. Men don't like change. No. You know that. Men don't like change. No. We like. Yeah. But but Joe, <laughs> first of all, Joe and I are ex. Well, he's an ex athlete. I'm still an athlete. But uh, you know, we grew up as he was a wrestler, as a football, basketball, baseball player. You know, we grew up. At training tables, we grew up having to eat to keep our calorie count up. You know this. Come on, I do. And You're I, an athlete, and I have boys that did that. Absolutely. And, and so those in the back of our brain uh, data points are still there. No, no, we can change. You could absolutely change that. Oh Come my on. God. You're, you're her, just her, using that as an excuse. I'm using it as an excuse. Karen Winnie and the coach no. on the business live with our very special guest, Joe Messina, who is on the William S. Hart School Board Trustee. Okay, now, uh, lunch I get. Salad, that's easy. Pro- now, with a protein, though. So you, that's when you get fun. You have some chicken or you can have some tuna on some really good mixed greens. You can have some nuts. Can some I nuts ask you are a really question? good. Huh. I don't eat that much. Honestly, serious. Don't look up here, girl. <laughs> okay. Don't be looking down at the bread basket. I never do that. Okay. Come on. <laughs> Just keep your eye. So my question is, I don't really eat that much. Yes, and I hear I that the... all the time. Yeah. For folks that are need to lose <laughs> weight, their first thing that they say is they don't. We got a eat little a mouse lot. over here. No, no, you know what? You're they'll, right. Cause... They'll say they don't eat a but, lot. But how about but the mental... calories that they're eating on the things that they are yeah. eating are so much. So coach, if you wish a to put kid's that to cheeseburger food... still got you know 18 million. No, calories. I know. But okay. okay, so here, so the more, stay with me on this. Okay, okay I'm trying to ask you an honest question. Uh, okay. The more exercise, which I do. Okay, you got to admit I'm in pretty good shape. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Rock solid. Then I'm hungry. So the exercising is good. Makes so now, me hungry. Good. So now that's where you fuel your body and feed your body the nutrients to repair so you can build muscle. The more muscle Let me flex the more lean touch. muscle you have on your body, the more your body's going to burn calories. So more calories your body will burn. So we want to build lean muscle. And what happens is we get older, we're losing our lean muscle, we have more fat. So we don't need to eat as many calories. But start working out and you start feeding your body protein, amino acids. More protein. I guess Uh, in a serious, I do need more protein. What What do you think of protein bars? Depends on the 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 company where you're Quest. getting them. So I ch- so I have this app that you put a barcode over, and it rated Quest Joe and Karen as as no no bar was over a B, no bar every so that had the highest rating as a B for Quest. taste or for quality for <laughs> ingredients. Okay, ingredients it, it, it's, not taste. It's a it's a it's well it's a it's a good bar. But the first thing I raised my hand on is any kind of app or anything that you can go to. And I learned this with consumable products. But if there's that website out there that tells you what is the best product you could buy, the first thing you have to ask is. Did Who's they pay yeah, to be it. on that app? Did they pay to be on that that um, um, you on know website? App, yeah. So 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 I don't. You, you, do you want to look at ingredients? A so Quest bar every once in a while? Sure, it's okay, absolutely. Okay, water. Uh, you're listening to the business of life. Karen Wayne and the coach with our very special guest Joe Messina. So 
how much water? I drink about 50 ounces a day. Cool. Which is a lot. You think it's a lot. I um, do. And I, my wife does over a gallon a day. That's awesome. How much? A gallon. Over a gallon a That's day. a lot of water. And how does she do with that? I mean, does she, it? But she's at home. Shape? She's at home near a restroom. Yeah. yeah, well, she's. It's all she drinks. She doesn't drink soda. She doesn't drink juices or anything like that. That's strictly what she. And drinks. And good water. water. So we want purified yes, it is water, water or pH yeah. water. Um, our bodies are what seven? What's the number? Seventy percent water. I more than you know, that. We got a I lot. Seventy, eighty percent. Mine right now is about that in fat. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, they, they they say half your your body weight in ounces is a start. So I don't know how much you weigh, but I'm not sure you would. 30. Okay, so we need to double your water. That's a good, oh yeah. So time out. Half. So let me show you something. He's so going to drown. Honey, we're on radio. You can't show me anything. Uh, okay. Well, this is a 32-ounce jug of water. Um, I carry this wherever I go. I drink about, at minimum, about three of these a day. It's like a weight, too. It's a weight. Yeah. So I work out. When yeah, I can exactly. with it. So you drink so, three of those? So I think this is great because it allows you to put ice in so it. So keep you it put cool. Good water. I put a little chlorophyll in here. And you carry it around. You carry it around. So that's kind of like my, my pacifier. But that's how you, it's a habit. Again, you're doing good with that, but this is more convenient because you can bring this into the restaurant, and then that way you don't have to have an alcoholic beverage. Interesting. Restaurants allow you to bring that sure, hydro flask in I do there? it all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's you. I don't know if they'd let me to come in. It's only water. Uh, KHTS 98.1, you're listening every Tuesday at 1, and then uh, we're on at Thursday at 2 and Friday at 1. We're going to come right back, and Karen and I are going to talk about wellness, but we're going to talk about a subject that may be a little sensitive to most of you. So if you're squeamish, pull your car over to the side of the road. We'll be right back on 98.1 FM at 1220 AM. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town Newhall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. With Facey Medical Group, good health is within your reach. Our doctors provide Santa Clarita's finest primary and specialist care at four convenient Santa Clarita locations. If you're looking for connected, convenient, personal care, there's no better place. We accept most health insurance, including plans offered through Covered California. Call 1-844-MY-FACEY for more information or to schedule an appointment. Marston's Restaurant has been a Pasadena landmark, voted the best breakfast in California by the Food Network magazine. Discover Marston's Santa Clarita location open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Marston's also has a fantastic catering menu that adds a delicious twist to any event. And they cater picnic dinners for that memorable romantic date. Experience Marston's on Newhall Ranch Road and McBean or log on to marstonsrestaurant.com. You got some aches and pains, you weekend warrior. Chronic inflammation or chronic pain, well, guess what? I've got a solution for you. It's called Men Cryotherapy right here in Santa Clarita. Men Cryotherapy is what the major leaguers are using to mend their aches and pains. They're in the L.A. Fitness Shopping Center on Newhall Ranch Road. They could be a wonderful blessing for you to relieve you of your joint pain and regain your mobility. Remember the name, Men Cryotherapy, or check them out at Men Cryotherapy. Dot com. That's M-E-N-D, cryotherapy.com. Santa Clarita's hometown station. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220, your hometown station. You can listen to any of the shows on hometownstation.com, hometownstation.com. Uh, if you want to see Karen Waney, go to Facebook, Karen Waney, W-A-I-N, I don't know, there's a lot. I-E. Uh, yeah, W-A-I. Joe Messina, our wonderful guest, he'll be back. I'm going to have him back probably every month uh, so that he has a daytime for him to talk about uh, your kids uh, and schools, and he's on the William S. Hart School Board. And uh, maybe when you come back in three weeks or so, we'll take phone calls. We didn't take calls today, but sure. maybe we'll take calls. Okay, so Karen is a wellness coach, life well, not a life coach, but a wellness coach. Well, I'd like to say that um, my business is is not just it, it, yeah, I'm a coach. You take people yeah, shopping. I, take... See, if you took me <laughs> shopping, 
can I sit in the cart? Can I sit? Could I sit in a little fire engine thing? Absolutely. Yes, me. I'll push you around. It'd be a great but, exercise. But seriously, Joe said something earlier. You know, whether you believe it or not, men are a different culture. So we look at food a little differently than, than females do. You know what? This is a that point. This is something that I'm going to bring up. And maybe this will be a life-changing sentence for you guys oh, to, wow. to, to There we swallow. go. Life-changing sentence. Okay. So, and this is, this is why I'm so passionate about education now. Because there's been so many people that, that have been friends or people that I've known of friends that when something happens to them, they might get the C word or something, something happens with their health, all of a sudden they're ready to make a change in their diet. And all I'm saying here today is don't wait for that. All right. I Do agree. what you can now. Make yourself the healthiest it can now. So when you're in your 60s, 70s, and 80s, you can be running on the beach like I'm going to. Just just make that plan and make it happen. Don't wait. For we don't live near. Don't the wait beach. for the wheels to come off. We don't off, live Ron. near the come beach on. like you do. But and I'm. But she's right. I, I got on a scale. It was two hundred ninety-two pounds. I was like, "Wow, did that happen? How does it happen? It sneaks up on you." And right? I made it. Ch- yeah, we made. made but change. what you just said is going to have impact with me. So I'm ready to go. I'm ready to be coached. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to get off of sugar. Now, when you say get off of sugar. Let's talk about that for the last couple of minutes of the show. So everything has sugar in it. Cereal, I like cereal, Joe. Cereal has a lot of sugar in it. So I have to start looking at the grams, correct? It's about labels. But here's, here's the easiest part. When you start eating whole foods... Okay, as far as instead of processed foods, you're going to be, uh, it's going to be easy. It's going to okay. be a no brainer. So I like bananas. And everybody says, well, coach, banana is very high on the glycemic index. It, right. So it depends what your goal is. If you're telling me you want to lose 20 pounds, you might not have some bananas for the first two or four weeks of a plan that I put you on. But bananas are a whole food. They're very nutritious. They have potassium and and magnesium, all those things that we need, right? So you will eventually have a banana. But we're not going to have five bananas a day, right? So it's all about, you know, in moderation. So um, you're, you're right in that that initially there's got to be a shock to your body initially. So there is a plan that's put in place that allows you to eat so you're not hungry. Can you coach me up every day? I'm serious. I'm a business coach. So when I'm coaching my clients, I talk to them every day because in order to change – Somebody has to be in your face. Joe, you know that being an ex-athlete. When, when we were growing up as kids in high school, that coach was in our face. and We went to school every day. We heard that conversation every day, yeah, right or wrong. I, I know this will come out if you had more time. You got First, you have to want to change for yourself. You can't want to change because people around you go, you look fat and terrible. You have I to don't change. look fat so I terrible. didn't say you did, but when I hit that scale and I looked at that, that was me saying, look, That's I reality. can't step. My knees hurt. My ankles hurt. My feet are swollen. I feel like crud all the time. I got past the 15-pound mark, and all of a sudden I noticed there was no pain in my knees anymore. Yeah, yeah, but this is the other big thing. So you're a coach to your clients. <laughs> yes. You're a business coach, yes. and you have your schedule of yeah. when you're going to call your yeah. clients, yep. okay, that your beloved clients. Yep. Where are you on your calendar? Where is Ron I'm number where it one. says working me? out – and preparing meals. Where where is that on your calendar? Oh, I don't know. Because have let me be, tell you I may not have that on my calendar. Because <laughs> you ask found. me what I do, yeah. but this is helping people in business thrive. Yeah. Because if you don't have Ron, there's none of these guys, right? So Good you point. have to take All care right. of yourself You're first. You're getting to me. You're getting me emotional now. On the show, okay. we call it Business Life Twenty Years doing the show. Karen Winnie, she'll be back next week. We'll continue the conversation about wellness and Look, your leadership, your inspiration will affect me because I need to hear your voice probably every day. You should call me every day and say, okay, let's go over, over your diet every day. Let's talk about – I'm serious. You know, I, I would pay you to do it, not a lot, <laughs> minimum wage. I'd pay you minimum wage. <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. Change, Joe said it, change is hard, okay? Is. We were talking about the school district earlier. We are talking about – you know, change is hard for all of us. So when it comes to eating, uh, it's probably the most challenging thing we have to do. It's getting worse. Our, our country is getting worse. Seriously, you know this. It is. But the, the obesity but we level. have control. Remember, we were just talking about this with our kids and how we could, you know, plan our life. We have control of the decisions we make and the goals that we're going to reach. We just need to actually 
get up and do the work no, to get it done. No, I, I, I'm teasing a little bit. You know what's frustrating <laughs> for me, Karen Wayne, is I'm right. disciplined in most of my life. I really am. I'm, I see I'm, that. I'm disciplined. I'm focused. But when it comes to eating, for some reason, uh, I fail way too often. I'll have four good days, and then I'll go three bad days. You know, it's like, I, I don't know. I know I'm making excuses, but maybe with your help in my life. Karen Waney, you can, how do people find you? Do you have a website? I do. I have a lot of things, but just my name, KarenWaney.com. W-A-I-N-I-E. Yes, KarenWaney.com or Facebook, Instagram, Love Your Life Wellness on Instagram. Definitely not the local banana split shop. Are you, Joe, sure. are you yeah. on, are Joe, are you on Instagram? Am I who? Uh, yeah, I think so. Joe, Miss, you think so? I don't do that. Well, you have a staff. You, I mean, you, yes, have, a staff you have a staff that staff does all that you're stuff right. for you. I, I, you know, uh, you're lucky that way. Go to my Instagram and you can view my Roxy girl. Ooh. My puppy. She's oh, so that's cute. Your, what kind of dog? She's a Pitsky. So she's half Pit, half Husky. Oh, wow. And she's beautiful. I have a puppy. How old's your puppy? Uh, almost four months. Mine's seven months. What's mm. your puppy's name? Roxy. Oh, Roxy. Oh, yeah. And I'm Lexi. <laughs> That's a dog show. Roxy and Lexi. <laughs> how cute. Yeah, she's we'll Lexi Lulu. Oh, how cute. Yeah, she's a little uh, uh, rescue. We rescued her. That's so awesome. A, yeah, we rescued her when she was three months old. See you. Uh, I guess I'll see you Thursday. Karen will be back next week. I'll see you Thursday at 2 o'clock with Charlene Gill. 2 o'clock. See you.